Okay, this is another video on partial fraction decomposition. We look at the case already where you have linear factors that aren't repeated and then linear factors that are repeated. And I'll put a link to those two videos in the description in case you want to go over those. In this problem, we have a uh, rational expression that has a what is called a non-repeated irreducible quadratic factor. So in other words, this one here in the denominator x squared plus 2x plus 4 doesn't factor. And of course, the x plus 1 is a linear factor that is not repeated. So the way this setup works then, and of course, keep in mind that again, we're looking at rational expressions that are in proper form. That is, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And that's the case here. Num uh, numerator is degree 2, denominator is degree 3. So we're okay. And then sometimes you'll have to factor the denominator. In this case, it's factored already x plus 1. And then the other one, x squared plus 2, x plus 4. That's the irreducible quadratic. So the way it works then, if you have a linear factor that's not repeated, you just pick a constant. Usually we pick a. And then it's over that factor. Now if this had a square on it, or then you'd have a repeated linear factor. Then you put b over x plus 1 quantity squared. In this case, it's just 1, so we leave it like that. So notice we expect that the denominator is degree 1. So if it's in proper form, the numerator has to be 1 degree less than that. So it has to be a constant. Whereas if you have an irreducible quadratic, so in this case we have x squared plus 2x plus 4. We expect then that this is uh, this is degree 2 in the denominator. So we expect the numerator to have degree less than that. So it could be degree 1 or it could, or it could be degree 0. We don't know until we actually find the constants. So we, what do we do here is we put another variable at bx plus c. Now it could turn out that b is 0 and the numerator is degree 1. But we don't know until we go ahead and solve it. Uh, and this is what we have. And then remember what we do next is we multiply through by the LCD. So we multiply by x plus 1. And then again, the x squared plus 2x cannot be factored. That's why they call it an irreducible quadratic. So again, all we're doing here is we're trying to find the decomposition. So we're, we're trying to find two rational expressions that if you add them up, they give you the expression we start off with. And again, those are procedures that you use, especially in calculus when you're solving or trying to find the integral of a expression. Makes it easier if you can break it down this way. Okay, so we multiply through both sides by the LCD, which is this. So this is going to cancel. All of this is going to cancel here for this first one. So on the left side, you'll have x squared plus 2x plus 3. And then on the right side, for this one here, the x plus 1 will cancel with this x plus 1. So that'll leave me with a times x squared plus 2x plus 4. And on the second expression, the x squared, x squared plus 2x plus 4 will cancel. This will cancel here. And you're leaving with x plus 1 times this bx plus c. And then in the next step here, I'll clear this for now. And this is what we wind up with. This is what I had. Just in case you have trouble reading my writing. It's hard enough to write and then you have to write with this little pen here. But that's what I had. And again, I'm multiplying through by the LCD. You wind up with this. It cancels over here, multiplying both sides by x plus 1 and x squared plus 2x plus 4. On the left side, we have the quadratic x squared plus 2x plus 3. And on the right side, we have this. And remember what we did on, on the other two videos. We simply got our square terms together, our linear terms together, and we created coefficients from the uh, left side to the right side, and we set up a system of equations, and then we solved, and we got the constants we needed. In this case, we need two, uh, three constants, a, b, and c. So those will be the actual variables that we come up with. And we also mentioned, uh, I think it was in the last video, we said we can treat this as an identity and just pick values for, for x and, and get your equations. So what I'm going to do here, I can just pick any number I want. I've got an identity. So let's let's do this. Let's let instead of setting up a system on this one, I might have varied a little bit and let's say let's let's pick uh, 
x to be negative 1. And why did I pick negative 1? Well, I picked negative 1 because in this expression right here, I pick x to be negative 1. Negative 1 and 1 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So that's going to wipe out this expression right here. So what does it leave me over here? Negative 1 here for x. That's negative 1 squared. It's 1. Negative 1 here. Negative 2. And 4 is 2. And then the 1 gives me 3. So this actually gives me then 8 times 3. I'll write the 3 in front. So this would be 3a. And then what do I have over here on this side? So negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And a plus 3. So minus 2 and 3 is 1. And then 1 gives me 2. So I get 2. Now I just solve for a. So divide both sides by 3. So that would tell me that a is equal to two-thirds. Okay, so we know the value of a. Now we need the values of b and c. So now I'm going to come up over here and say, now let's let, and you can pick any number you want. Obviously you want to, you want to pick conv convenient numbers that are not too large that will simplify this. So let's pick x to be zero. Let's let x be zero. So on the left side, put a zero where the x is, everything gets wiped out except the 3. So I'm going to have 3 left over on the, on the left side. Okay, so then on this section right here, x is 0, so this wipes out the 2x. x squared, 0, that cancels out, leaves me with a 4. So I've got a 4 here, left over in that parenthesis right there. But remember, we know the value of a. a is 2 thirds. So I'm just going to put 2 thirds right here. So that'll be times two thirds four. And then what do I have over here? X is zero. So, okay, put a zero there. A zero times B will be zero. That leaves me with a C here. And a zero there. That leaves me with a one. One times C is C. So this is C. So I get then three. This could be eight over three. Take it over. It's minus eight over three. At three minus. 8 over 3 is equal to C. Get your common denominator here. Multiply by 3 and 3. That would give me 9. 3 is the same thing as 9 over 3. So 9 over 3 minus 8 over 3 gives me 8. Or gives me 1, I should say, over 3. 9 minus. So 9 thirds minus 8 thirds. So I get C is 1 third. Okay, so so far I haven't really introduced the system. It works out nicely this way. So now we need, we still need uh, b. Let's pick another number. I could pick x to be 2, x to be negative 2. I want to stay small here, so I'm going to let x equal to 1. Let's let x equal to 1. So on the left side, you just put 1 where the x is. So it's 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So that's 2 and 1 is 3. And 3 more is 6. So the left side is going to be 6. And then let's put a 1 right here for the x is for this parenthesis. So it's 1 and 1. 1 plus 2 is 3 and 4 is 7. So this parenthesis here is 7 times a. But we know a to be 2 thirds. So let's put 2 thirds right there. 2 thirds multiplies the 7. So put one of them in parentheses. I'll, I'll put the 7 here. And then plus in the next parentheses. We're looking for b. We'll let next be 1, so this will be 1 times b is b, so this will be b plus c is 1 third, put that there, and then x plus 1, we'll let next be 1, so 1 and 1 is 2, so we get 2 here. So this gives me 6 is equal to, and then 2 times 7 is 14 thirds here, 2 thirds times 7 is 14 thirds. Here, multiplied by 2, we get 2b. And then 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. And then we have 14 thirds and 2 thirds. So that's 16 thirds. We take that over to the other side. So this is 6 minus 16. 
thirds. Okay, we added 14 thirds and 2 thirds, 16 thirds, take it over. 14 thirds and 2 thirds is 16 thirds, take it over. I get 6 minus 16 thirds and that's going to equal to 2b. And then here, let's figure this out. 6 over 1, write that with the denominator 3. This would be this would be 18 over 3. 18 over 3 minus 16 over 3 is 2 thirds is equal to 2b. So divide both sides by 2 or the same thing as multiply both sides by 1 half. So multiplying 2, 2b by 1 half gives me b and multiplying 2 thirds by 1 half gives me 1 third. So now we got all the variables we want. a is 2 thirds, b is 1 third, and c is 1 third. And that's your solution. Okay. Now all we have to do is go back to the uh, the setup, and where you have an A, put two thirds. Where you have a B, put one third. Where you have a C, put one third. In this setup here, then we simply replace the A by. And this is your final setup. Then we got A to be two thirds. We put it there where the A was, and then this was to be X plus C, but B was one third, and C was also one third. So we factored out the one third, and we wrote it this way. So that's one way you could. You could write it. You could also do it this way if you wanted to. You could put the two here. Multiply by three. Put it there. Instead of the one third here, we could multiply by three. Numerator and denominator. Get it like that. Like I said, I'll go ahead and put a link on the last two videos. In case you want to refer to those. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.